Welcome to the Molecular Imaging and Therapeutics Division at IU Radiology. You are watching this video because you have been diagnosed with thyroid cancer and you have probably already had your thyroid taken out. Your physician has sent you here to complete staging of your tumor with the imaging and has also ordered a radioactive iodine treatment. We cannot be sure you will actually need to be treated until we've completed your scan, but please listen to the following information so we can answer any questions you may have. You have been diagnosed with one of three major types of thyroid cancer, papillary, follicular, or Herthel cell. Most patients with one of these types of thyroid cancer have part or all of their thyroid removed surgically. Approximately one to two months after surgery, patients may be sent to our department for iodine imaging and treatment. This imaging is important to complete staging of your tumor. We perform a scan that helps us identify any sites where cancer may have spread. The treatment is important as an adjuvant therapy, which means it complements the surgery in removing cancer. It also helps us follow your cancer over the next few years. But before we get into too much detail, let's talk about your preparation for this visit. After recovering from surgery, any remaining normal thyroid tissue in your neck and any thyroid cancer should accumulate iodine. This includes the iodine you find in food and the radioactive iodine that we use. We want to make sure that both normal thyroid and thyroid cancer are stimulated to take up our radioactive iodine. We stimulate these tissues by increasing the level of TSH in your body. TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. When you have lots of TSH in your body, this revs up thyroid tissue and thyroid cancer to take up iodine. Now, there are two different ways to increase your levels of TSH. First, you can stop taking your thyroid hormone. It usually takes between two to six weeks to get your TSH to get to a certain minimum level of stimulation. Your doctor will perform blood draws to determine if your TSH is high enough to move forward with imaging and treatment. The second way to increase your TSH is for us to give you two intramuscular recombinant TSH or thyrogen injections. This is just putting TSH directly into your body. We know you have a very high level after these shots, so we don't need to measure your TSH level. In addition to making sure your TSH level is high enough, you should also be on a low iodine diet for one to two weeks prior to any iodine imaging or treatment. The low iodine diet starves any thyroid remnant tissue and any thyroid cancer of iodine, and it primes it to take up the radioactive iodine that we give you. Please let the technologist know if you are uncertain about either of these steps. And please note, if you are receiving recombinant TSH injections, this will take place on the first and second days of your visit with us. So you've had your surgery, you've recovered, and you've been properly prepared for this visit. What happens next? Next, you will be given a capsule of iodine-123 by mouth. If you are receiving TSH injections, you will take the iodine-123 on the day of your second injection. If you are not getting injections, but you have increased your TSH by stopping your thyroid hormone, you will take the iodine-123 capsule the first day you arrive in our department. Regardless of your preparation, after you take the capsule, you can go home. This radioactive iodine is used for imaging only. It is not dangerous to others, and you do not have to change your behavior when you get home. The next day, you will come back to the molecular imaging department and undergo imaging. This is the gamma camera we will use to perform your iodine-123 whole body scan, which takes approximately 15 to 20 minutes. We will also measure the amount of iodine that is in your neck. This takes only a couple of minutes. After your iodine-123 scan and uptake are complete, they will be reviewed by one of the IU molecular imaging radiologists. This information, along with the information obtained during your surgery, will help the physician determine whether to treat you with iodine-131 and what the appropriate dose should be. This is an example of a whole body iodine scan. If you need to be treated, your radioactive iodine treatment dose, iodine-131, is then ordered by a technologist. It takes about an hour to receive the dose from the pharmacy. During that time, one of our radiologists will discuss the scan and treatment with you in addition to answering any questions you may have. This radiation can affect people around you, so the physician will also discuss how you will need to change your behavior around other people. You will also receive paperwork with these instructions to take home with you. The iodine-131 treatment dose is a capsule that you swallow. Over the next several weeks, this radiation will slowly destroy any thyroid tissue and hopefully any thyroid cancer remaining in your body. 
Finally, approximately 7 to 10 days after your treatment, we'll ask you to return for another whole body scan. You will not receive any other medication or radioactive iodine. We will simply make use of the iodine-131 remaining in your body and image you in our scanner. This is similar to the whole body iodine-123 scan that you had prior to the treatment. Please note this scan in some cases gives us extra information about possible areas of thyroid cancer in your body, but it will not immediately change the treatment you have already received. So, that's a general overview of the process of imaging and treating thyroid cancer with radioactive iodine. Now, we'll go over contraindications to the treatment, guidelines for behavior after treatment, radiation safety precautions, and review some frequently asked questions. Let's start with contraindications. First, we will want to make sure you haven't been exposed to anything that may reduce the usefulness of our test or make your treatment less effective. Have you stopped medications such as multivitamins and amiodarone? Have you had iodinated contrast recently, for example, during a CAT scan, cardiac catheterization, or interventional radiology procedure? If you have received any of these medications or had an imaging study with CT contrast recently, please let the technologist know. You should not undergo treatment if you are pregnant, and you should not become pregnant within 6 to 12 months of treatment. If you are a woman of childbearing age, we will need to perform a urine pregnancy test unless you have had a hysterectomy or tubal ligation. You also should not breastfeed after receiving iodine-131 therapy. You will only be treated after you have discussed all risks and benefits with one of our physicians and there are no contraindications. When you are comfortable with moving forward, the iodine-131 capsule will be given to you. Then what happens after that? Let's review what to do after treatment. After you've received the iodine-131 capsule, there are three major goals. Number one, absorb as much of the radioactive iodine as possible. Number two, get rid of iodine that doesn't stick in your thyroid. And number three, limit radiation exposure to other people. So how do we maximize absorption of iodine-131? You should not eat or drink for one hour prior to taking the capsule or for two hours following. This is so that your stomach absorbs as much of the iodine-131 as possible. A small amount of water is fine. Once you're two hours out from taking the capsule, you may eat a regular diet. Now let's talk about getting rid of the radiation that isn't sitting in your thyroid gland. Radioactive iodine leaves your body mostly in urine within the first 24 hours. It is also in all of your secretions, including saliva, sweat, tears, stool, and other body fluids. Since you will urinate a lot of the radiation out, it's important that you drink plenty of fluids and urinate frequently. If you are prone to constipation, take gentle laxatives to help remove radioactive iodine from stool. Now let's talk about safety precautions. In addition to keeping you, the patient, safe, it is important to try to minimize the radiation exposure to those around you. This is especially important for kids younger than 12 years old and for pregnant women. You can do this by decreasing time spent with them, increasing your distance from them, and practicing good hygiene. You will get specific instructions based on the dose of iodine-131 you receive. You will have those in writing before you leave the molecular imaging department. A good rule of thumb is to act as if you have the flu. The less time you spend around others, the less radiation they will receive. Avoid spending more than a few minutes near other adults. The radiologist will recommend staying home from work for a few days depending on the type of work you do and the dose given. Avoid prolonged close contact with children under 12 and pregnant women for at least 7 days. Avoid kissing and sexual intercourse for at least 7 days. Next, the farther you are away from someone, the less radiation they will receive. This includes pets. Sit as far away as possible from other passengers and drivers on the ride home. Avoid public transportation. Sleep in bed alone for several nights. Remember, maximize your distance more than 6 feet from children and pregnant women. Avoid public places where you might be close to other people for long periods of time. Again, you will receive specific instructions detailing how long you should practice these precautions before you leave our department. Just like when you have the flu, frequent hand washing is recommended. It is also recommended that you use separate bathrooms. The toilet should be flushed a couple of times after use and men should sit down while urinating in order to minimize splashing. Avoid preparing foods for others and use separate utensils and dinnerware when eating. Wash your laundry in separate loads. Lastly, dispose of waste such as tissues immediately. Now that we've discussed radiation safety precautions, let's go over some frequently asked questions. Will this hurt? 
Few patients have a sore neck or sore throat a few days after the treatment. We recommend you take over-the-counter pain medication for any pain or swelling. This helps the majority of patients. If you have pain that does not improve, difficulty swallowing, or difficulty breathing after treatment, please go to the nearest emergency department or call your physician. Will I feel different? Most patients don't feel any different after treatment. Does this cause sterility? Iodine-131 is not known to cause permanent sterility. Is there a chance this won't work? It is possible that after treatment, your cancer doesn't go away completely or it may come back. Further treatment will depend on the location and extent of your disease and will be determined by your physician. Additional treatments with iodine-131 are possible. A second treatment will not be considered for at least 6 to 12 months after your first treatment. This gives the first dose the maximum amount of time to work. Are there any other risks? A minority of patients experience dry mouth or loss of taste sensation. This is usually temporary and is more common with higher doses. One way to minimize the risk of permanent damage is to suck on sour candies beginning 24 hours after your treatment. This will help move the radioactive iodine through your salivary glands and out of your mouth. Will iodine-131 make me glow? Iodine-131 will not make you glow. You will not look any different and most patients don't feel any different. Remember though, you do have to try to maximize distance and minimize time with other people. The last topic we will discuss is post-therapy follow-up. It is essential to have close follow-up with an endocrinologist. Your endocrinologist will continue managing your thyroid hormone replacement and will obtain regular blood draws to assess for the possible recurrence of cancer. If you do not currently see an endocrinologist, please let the technologist know and we will be happy to assist you. This concludes our overview of thyroid cancer imaging, information regarding oral iodine-131 therapy, and post-treatment guidelines. We hope this has been helpful. One of our nuclear medicine technologists will be with you shortly. We appreciate your attention while watching this video. Please, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask the technologists. We thank you for choosing IU Health and we look forward to taking care of you.